Hi guys, welcome to Ask Problem. So today we're going to see some um, um, static identifiers. So this is like devices which actually emit some information which we can use it, grab it and we can use it in our apps and payments and a lot of these technologies. So we're going to talk about uh, three different things here. So first one is RFID, which is this one. And I don't know if you can see it. This is this one. And then uh, next one is BLE, like a Bluetooth icon, uh, beacons. And the third one is your uh, NFC, which comes with your phone as a reader as well as a transmitter. So now, what are these technologies and where are they used? And how you can actually use them on your business or in your companies or in your offices, how you can actually implement these technologies and how it's gonna be useful. All right, so first thing is, uh, let's look about these technologies here. So first one is RFID. So RFID is actually radio frequency identification system. So this is basically um, comes in two different formats. And this was actually invented in sort of like 1980s um, to be used in conjunction with uh, barcodes to enable tracking of assets in a in, in, in large inventory workspace and warehouses and stuff. So these RFIDs comes as uh, two types of tags. One is a passive tag, another one is an uh, active tag. So the passive tags, you don't need any power supply, but the range is limited. And the active tag, you need a power supply. So basically it will emit rays from the tags. So now how the passive tag works is if you have been to shopping malls or um, or any, any, any place where you actually do some purchases, you can actually see at the entrance and exit, there is actually two beams uh, with, through which actually you walk through. So it's basically one of them is basically a transmitter. Another one is basically a tra receiver. So now all your clothes that you buy, so they have this RFID which is actually pinned to the clothes. So if you don't pay them and if you actually get past the door with the RFID tag intact, uh, so these checkpoints which basically transmits and emits will actually activate that passive RFID for a minute and then the transmitter will be able to catch it. So once the transmitter catches it, it actually sends a signal to the alarm and the alarm raises. So this is how the passive tag works. So the active tag, you don't actually need a transmitter, you just need a receiver. So this is basically a tag that also already has a power and um, you just have to uh, have the reader. In okay. So generally, there are two types of readers. So one is actually fixed infrastructure readers, and another one is the mobile readers. So the fixed infrastructure readers is what actually you find in malls and shopping centers, uh, where you actually see some two beams actually on the exit and the and the entrance, which basically transmits and emits and catches the RFIDs which gets through that. And uh, so the other one is a reader which comes into your hand, and you can actually uh, it actually transmits and then it it gets the passive uh, to emit some rays and then it catches back so that it gets the identification number which is embedded into this one to identify what product it is actually you're looking at. So that's actually the mobile reader. So the uh, fixed fixed infrastructure um, RFID reader and transmitter generally has a, a range around um, around 100 feet. So that's the sort of range that you're looking at it. And um, and the other one is actually the hand reader, which is around 50 feet of radius um, transmission. And the, but but the point is these things are actually omnidirectional. So unlike NFCs and uh, other technologies, these actually are omni uh, omni. Uh, uh, potential so that means you actually get the um, frequency uh, throughout the device so it's not actually just coming from one particular direction and then if you actually look at um, so the next one is basically NFC so NFC has been around till 2002 and Sony Nokia Microsoft lot of companies have implemented NFC's and if you look at the latest phones let's say Android iOS any make and model that you look at it you have an NFC device embedded into it so that's basically uh, works as a reader as well as as a transmitter so that's um, that's the NFC devices that we have so where do we use this one so these ones we use it in everyday payments such as Google Pay Apple Pay and um, Samsung Pay and a lot of these companies they actually use these NFC uh, payments so how does NFC works? So NFC is basically um, sort of a bit more intelligent compared to um, the RFID or probably we can call it as a subset of RFID. So the NFC has a very small range. That means you have to keep the reader very close to it to in order for it to actually get, get identified. It is actually again a sort of like a passive. So that means you have to uh, give some sort of an energy and then it, 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 it feeds back the data from the NFC. So 
where all we have NFCs, not just on the payments, but also in products. If you see some of the shoe manufacturers and then apparel manufacturers, they actually embed NFCs into their product labels. So now when you actually scan the product labels, you know that whether the product is legit or actually um, counterfeit products. So you're able to get that information. And with this one, the manufacturers are able to actually track, register the products and then um, let's take a, let the customer buy them securely uh, without getting uh, cheated by some counterfeits. So now these NFC devices, um, the RFID devices generally cost you around 10 cents or much lesser than that if you buy it in bulk. And um, whereas the NFC devices, you can get it around uh, two to five cents. It's, it's, it's almost the same price or cheaper than RFIDs and it is actually much smaller. So you can even embed it into um, even medicinal bottles and a lot of these things you can actually embed it in them too. And right now RFCs have been used in quite a lot of locations, even for um, ID cards that you people issue for their uh, company staffs and stuff. And even business cards, a lot of places people are in implementing uh, NFC um, based devices. So now uh, NFCs and RFIDs, where do people use it apart from these typical scenarios? Industry wise, if you look at it, they use it in uh, retail segment, RFIDs and NFC, NFCs as well. People use it in um, retails as well as in um, and any place that you want to have an identification or payments and stuff. So how is actually NFC payments are much more secure compared to a typical credit card? So the credit card is actually static card, which is similar to an RFID card, which emits a static code. So that's basically a crypted, crypted codes identifying your card, which is which is pinned to you. And then that information is actually sent to the server, such as Visa, uh, MasterCard, and then they verify it to say that, okay, this is your card and this is how much limit you have and whatnot. And then that comes back to the actually the uh, the machine which actually gonna charge you. And then once you actually um, finish the payment off, it actually detects the payment from your account. So this is actually the process of how the credit cards work. With the new NFC based payments, such as Google Play and all these ones, it works sort of the same, but at the same time, it is not gonna have one single static code. So every time you initiate a payment using NFC reader, and it actually creates a unique uh, code token for your credit card, so that means even if a hacker gets through gets through that token, and um, so he's not he'll not be able to use it in the next time because the token will expire after a single transaction. So that means the next time when you try to use the same card using your Google Pay and paying on your phone, it actually going to generate another token which is not going to be same as the previous one, but it's actually for the same card. So that way the transaction will still happen on your single card, but the transaction identification how it actually identifies your card with the system, it actually uses two different tokens for two different transactions. So that's how it works. Next is actually BLE. So BLE is actually a new form of beacon devices. And this has been in market for let's say around the last five, six years and stuff. And this is getting really, really popular. So why this is getting popular? Because uh, the limitations of RFIDs and NFCs is basically um, um, you for NFCs you have to be really close and for RFIDs you, you need to have a transmitter for a passive uh, device and then for if it's an active device you need to have battery powered so that is a problem because RFID batteries you know you, you need to the longevity of how the device will uh, stand against the battery it's, it's actually it's a questionable that means you need to have a bit more power and it actually lasts for a few months and stuff whereas with the BLE the advantage is basically the power so you can actually power this little device for two to six years so that is really cool and latest version of BLEs are supposed to be much more better and they're going to be even smaller and has a much more smaller battery so this device is a very tiny device and this is actually was actually one of the very first device that came out. It's called Estimote BLE. And um, so this was like around seven, eight years ago, probably. So the, even the current ones, if you look at it, they are actually a lot, lot smaller. And um, so they come with a much more um, higher um, battery life. So these devices, you just have to, um, this emits a particular static ID. And um, so this, you can embed it into your system. And this, you can put it onto the shelf in your retail store or in your product displays or car showrooms or wherever it is. So all people have to do is um, they just have to take the phone. As soon as they go near the device, the device will actually emit the delays and actually creates an event. Your app can actually create event. That's actually the coolest thing of it. So the, you, you, if you're building an app for BLE, so once your phone is actually coming near to your, to your device, your app can actually trigger um, different events. That's like, you know, this guy is coming near you, show this particular product. 
he's going away from you close the product and show the other product so you can actually create a sort of like an interactive indoor experience for the shoppers with the BLE devices so now with the invent of latest BLE which is the, the Bluetooth 5 um, it's gonna have much more features we will talk about that in another video and um, okay guys so that's all the purpose so this is basically used in a lot of retail segments and um, hospitals and a lot of places this is being used and the main purpose uh, main advantage of this one is the uh, the longevity of power that it has and it's actually an active ID so you don't need a transmitter all right guys we'll catch up in another video and uh, if you like my videos just subscribe and um, uh, share it